see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow. So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow much more than I'll never know, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world, yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton. How did we come to these two options? I don't know. Neither do my friends. Oh well, the point is that the two options alone are enough to start off a brutal civil war that will leave plenty of suicides, violent protests among ethnic and different age groups, and a whole lot of media orchestrated shouting. When Clinton wins, it's fair to say that the Trump people and surely some of the Bernie bros will come to seize the day burning things, vandalizing property, and calling people. But I can't say it because that's a lot of swearing. When Trump wins, it's fair to say that there'll surely be bombs for its throat slings, racial slurs shouted about. There has to be some this and this and that and a good old WWE stage orchestration. Whichever way you look at it, everyone loses, and America will be laughed worldwide for standalone nonsense. Not for Thomas Edison, not for Hollywood, no, for two unpopular candidates. 2016, I'm sorry to say this, but there's a hashtag that belongs to you. Worst election ever. Although she does have a very nice figure. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. <laughs> in in to pertaining to how me being a British American voting in this election has to do with anything, what has to do with a great deal with the way how strange politics or how familiar things are in the USA as they are in the UK. For instance, immigration. It's fair to say that this is the biggest hot button topic in the past five years. We have never heard this much about unfettered immigration since the 1970s, when Enoch Powell used dog whistle tactics to state that Britain was changing rapidly into a multicultural PC society. Donald Trump will continue on to deal with this issue in his own hand. Firstly for me, bashing at immigrants all the time can be repetitive, but acknowledging mass immigration can affect Working class jobs is a reality. It's a two folded dilemma. Land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. These people from the With immigration comes the fear that corporatist free trade agreements here. imposed by centralized banks and Jewish cronies will affect jobs for everyone under the guise that everyone's trying to compete for jobs will have to do with the countries that lack strong labor laws and offer piss poor wages. 
given how oh, both parties, particularly Bernie, Bernie Sanders' movement, as far as was seeing the Democratic Party and Donald Trump's populist rhetoric, they'll mean both of them must adapt in, or die worse. if they want to win the voters of the increasingly the working class and criminals, if they got criminal records or what. Neighbor Terry Mockney Sr. lives just down the road and says he and his wife fear for their safety. Race and religious tensions seem to be even worse than ever before. With recent shootings that aren't on black men and shootings directed at police officers, for example, and all those who shot and blown up the peace in France, Germany and Belgium via jihadi Muslims are sure to divide and create a war mentality amongst everyone. Everyone is feeling the pain and the bruises. Not surprising one bit. Many people blame the rise of white nationalism in the age of the first black president. Also, many people blame on the rise of multiculturalism and mass immigration. You said something offensive, something that might have been women, religious, and ethnic minorities. Oh dear, we must send you to prison. For the most part, political correctness has become a very strong issue in its own way, more or less a, a, a debate between those who feel that saying something offensive for most right-wing conservative values and those who feel that silencing someone saying something controversial is against free speech and they're not wrong. People are getting a little crazy with being you know, having to worry about every little word they say and whether it's actually politically correct or not. In England where certain comedians are being pulled up on political correctness where I think you've just got to realize especially with comedy just loosen up you know everyone's going to be offended by something and I just think there's always going to be someone who will look for something to complain about. Chris Christie from New Jersey close here that speaks his mind regardless of what the consequences are versus um, always being worried what people are going to think, what the full numbers show. So you'd rather be offended and at least have the truth? Yes, very much. It's an issue that I believe unites both people of the left and the right, making sure that people who fought just in the wars right and the armed services oh, aren't left behind or Thank forgotten you. for something silly. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton haven't said much to help Julian Assange or Ed Snowden gain asylum or exile without criminal charges. It only leaves people from the libertarian faction and the hard left to support them as some sort of fork criminal or political prisoner. It can literally take less than a second for a computer to go through the possibilities and pull that password out. you write Cumberbatch's accent? Well, you know... <clears throat> We're all used to foreign actors trying to do Australian accents and it's so grating on the ear. When you hear someone trying to do, a, a Brit trying to do an Australian accent and your own accent, uh, I can, can't tell you how, how great. This may not be a very strong decision, but it is something that irks me for some reason. Alex Jones has decided to support Donald Trump's campaign despite his previous status as a conspiracy theorist against the system with libertarian leaning beliefs. When it comes to Bernie Sanders, I'm surprised to see him endorse Hillary Clinton despite his popular popularity among the hard left-wing voter base. To me, they seem hypocrites and somehow opportunists because they believe third parties very, are spoiler very, very candidates when they aren't and uh on drugs though she's gonna be <laughs> and why she must become humanity's gonna come together ah! Ah! our next president ah! Ah! And i have the government documents where they said they're going to encourage homosexuality with chemicals so that people don't have children i don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin frogs gay ah! Ah! i have come here to make it as clear as possible as to why i am endorsing hillary clinton ah! Ah! I will not let you down. Ah! Ah! Yeah.
Many have said they will move to Canada in response to having a president they don't like winning and running for office. Most of you left-wingers will say this, but there are some on the right who have claimed the same thing. How should I know? Someone back in 2012, who I knew she was a Republican, she said the same thing. While Canada is certainly a very good country with a strong economy and egalitarianism, they are a bit more strict on immigration than the US. Similar to Australia, you pay somewhat higher taxes than a VAT, have a points based system, and try to get in. Trump or Clinton winning might not guarantee you citizenship overnight. It's a lot of paperwork and costs money. Something millennials have to don't have. Without an accent. Lead one to believe Canadians love leaves. I don't know why there is a leaf on the Canadian flag or how that happened. Canada has universal health care. Canadians love hockey and they eat poutine. And you make a special breed of chick that's like a sassy French brought in an Indian. So they got the eyes like this and then the ooh, big lips. Oh my God, I'm telling you. It's so cold over here. That when you meet someone from, say, Winnipeg, you just go like this. It's like seeing a war vet. We will not Taking someone's guns is we a controversial thing indeed. The U.S. Our government Constitution protects the Second Amendment. Humanity. Understandable, even if recent attacks are sporadically occurring throughout the country, with people shooting at police in schools and universities American and all, it surely scares some people off. In this Phoenix case, the Second State. Amendment is seen by both the far right and the far left and their respective anti-establishment branches of libertarianism and anarchism as a means to fight against tyranny. A soft-spoken brain surgeon who was apolitical once upon a time. So would reinstating the assault weapons ban help to bring down the violent crime? I think reinstating the assault weapon ban would certainly help. You say you're leaving for Canada if your candidate is defeated? Jim Gaffigan has some thoughts about that. I'm moving to Canada. A soft-spoken brain surgeon who is apolitical once upon a time now turned to politics in effort to bring peace and conservative unity. So he and his supporters say Ben Carson is perhaps the mildest Republican candidate to do much damage. But there have been some instances where his friend Michael Jackson has whispering have garnered him controversies surrounding his views on how the Holocaust Ended. How the earth began from a Christian minion's perspective, and his childhood being full of bullying and fighting with his mother. To me, it Forget doesn't that. sound like a complex Just statement at whisper all. And whisper about how we need to lower taxes. Did not most a small of believe in what Hitler was doing. And a campaign slogan but that reads, Hill, Spire, and Revive. Instead of registering their displeasure, they simply decided to go along to get along. Doctor, these are your quotes. You said we live in a Gestapo age. What, did you read the book? I have not read the book, no. I rest my case. We gotta make a request. He's a covert agent from Canada and Cuba, infiltrating the US government with his brand of Christian denominum. Stubborn attitude among constituents and volunteers for his campaign, and willingness to shut down the government, one, and Mr. also his willingness Cameron. to place civil rights activists for Rosa Parks in the U.S. dollar bill. Actually, he's not a covert spile spook, he's just a politician, who just so happens to be born in Canada, but relocated to the U.S. a lot early in his age, and his father is Cuban, but his mother is of Irish heritage, making him essentially multi-ethnic. Right now, at one of the most popular you know, I don't think States. anyone really cares about that, or Duck so Dice. they say. This is a show about a God-fearing family of successful entrepreneurs who love guns, who love to hunt, and who believe in the American dream. This is Jam! Jam! Oh, yeah. What do you do about a boy from a prison named Jam? Well, they won't say he smoked pop through his early years and was in public on live TV during the bay! In the end, some child talks with that Marco Rubio son of a bitch despite him power to represent Florida. His father was known for being a warmonger with his and guy, too. And his grandfather was known for saying, Read my lips. No, no taxes. Didn't feel, but didn't fulfill the promise. While the bush is out, my friend, I do respect George W for changing his time recently as a humanitarian and committed to painting. 
Also, Jeff has confessed five customers that would like to vote for Gavin Johnson out of frustration with the Republicans he works for you. One second. No. I the didn't want to get. Is, yeah. You okay. cannot take more energy tonight. I like no. that. Look. It was my. Chris Christie, fat man who loves to give New Jersey a reputation for better or worse. Are you, are you stupid? Like Jeff, he's been in the game for quite a while, much to his credit, but has been involved in controversy surrounding his tenure in NJ with Bridges and Dole Feet, more over than kind social um, services. He's a persona. Similar, at least, like Silvio Berlusconi, or North Korea's Kim Jong Un, is one of comic value, given not only his now, weight, no, on, but his willingness to lick at Trump's some point, anus. You've got to be able to call BS on those kind of press releases. Here's what my suggestion would be to him don't be so cute. And when you make a mistake, admit it. Don't lawyer it. People don't like lawyers. I'm a lawyer. They don't like them. The master commanding the Republican table, Rand Paul, like his father, always intrigues me whenever he comes on stage, given his status as being the son of the grandfather of libertarianism, a philosophy that, whilst ultra-capitalist, is certainly the least criticized among the electorate, compared to social capitalism like the Democrats or Christian tinge capitalism like the Republicans. With that being said, however, Ryan has perplexed me a number of times where he takes positions outside of the libertarian or anarchist philosophy in an orthodox sort of way, saying he's okay with drone warfare, supporting Donald Trump for president. He also garnered controversy surrounding his views on vaccination and the Civil Rights Act, which many have accused him of being part of the Goldberg we fringe rap, for which he's more right-wing or confused than his father. Is to make sure that Here's you use the, problem, the system governor. the way it's supposed Here's to work. Here's the problem, Governor. You fundamentally un misunderstand the Bill of Rights. Every time you did a case, you got a warrant from a judge. I'm talking there, about searches without warrants, there is indiscriminately no of all Americans' records, and that's what I fought to end. I don't trust President Obama with our records. I know you gave him a big hug, and if you want to give him a big hug again, go right ahead. He's an establishment head, but also someone the GMP can cling on exactly towards as a safe bet for running for the Let's president. With this fiction that you know, kind of sounds like Matt Damon. You know, is that in the family will be a Cuban surname? America continues to be Welcome to nations of a New England Democrat in the age of after 50 years old. And was once a quiz answer at the floor of the nightclub. Shh. I'm telling you when I said that. Perhaps the most famous thing he's known for is engaging in the pipelines and immigration bill in correspondence with the Dream Act. Word. Like the one, the president. one bill that you are very well known for is a bill that passed the Senate but did not become law because it didn't get through the House, and that was comprehensive immigration reform. I know you've said that you don't think it should be comprehensive. In the future, it should be piecemeal. You need to convince voters. Uh, I don't think it can pass as a comprehensive piece that's of That's the issue. Yeah, and I have evidence. We did, we tried it. Ali Fiorina and Hillary Clinton are only known for being bill. strong female honestly, voices running for major office. It's our history, list, though. Would... Fiorina didn't is make it, but she did have a stringy reputation as being a former chief officer at the Packet, HP, which is a computer company, and I have found one or two of their products in my lifetime. Well, she's not that different from many of the Republicans, except she doesn't have the pompous hair of Trump, the libertarianish elements of Rand Paul, not your appearance. Please feel free to respond. Or the establishment credentials of Christie or Jay. Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. In short, none of these guys are unmemorable from the start, but I will outline what they stand for. Scott Walker represented Wisconsin, similar to Paul Ryan, but dropped out very early in the race. Jim Gilmore is forgettable, and sounds like he could be a relative to Danny one of the musicians from Pink Floyd. You know, Kasich, Dave Gilmore. Uh, John Kasich, George Pataki is known later to Helga from Hey Arnold. Like Rudy Giuliani, he has connections with the state of New York. John Kasich Trump, is the governor of Ohio, uh, and is a center right politician at and best and perhaps the most humble running for uh, the GOP. Mm -hmm. His ordinary uh, late nature led Trump to his demise in return for an orangutan. Mike Huckabee ran back in 2008, but then quit and had his own Fox News panel show, and is now back to make God and America great again. 
So Rick Santorum is even more guard to the point that the Christian extremists will praise him as much as the Muslim extremists praise Mohammed and the Jewish Zionists praise the UN. Lindsey Graham has a funny accent by all accounts, hails from South Carolina and speaks to the military proudly and sounds like a class Democrat at all times when he uses Trump for being a racist and a xenophobe. Up in general is what Brits would call a bucky, but he is not ordinary bucky. He is one of the first governors in America, presumably from the state of Louisiana, who is both South Asian and Christian. Frankly, his best achievement was to carry down the Confederate flag after the Shot at North Carolina, uh, judge attacks in his state. You know, adamant that Donald Trump is not the right person. Okay. While these three right, candidates so aren't that important, Martin O'Malley has made a so, name for himself uh, representing else, Maryland, um, whereas preparing on stage agree, fighting I mean, for a typical democratic values and social program, all very dull and meager. He, he looks like a typical um, politician, not very yeah, enthusiastic. Uh, the, Jim Weyer the might be the most interesting Hillary, one of three, like given his weird Hillary reputation Hillary. of saying yeah, he's not for gun control, it's against no affirmative no action, adios. something that you would hear from a Republican. Adios. 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 And then there's Lee Kim Chafee, on the other hand, is beyond dull, and only known for being mentioned on Conan O'Brien's late night talk show discussing how he wants to go back to the metric system, if you want to do that, to Canada. Internet and copyright expert Lawrence Lassig is usually held to the same regard as Ed Snowden or Julian Assange as a spokesperson for the digital age and the anti-establishment. He ran for the Democrats unofficially in an effort to fight against a government run by big corporate money, tapping to the same anger felt by the Bernie Sanders supporters. Or she didn't break through given the cronious nature of the party and the government's duopoly itself. To watch this extraordinary Occupy uh, Wall Street movement take off. How does this relate to your work? Well, I want to know whether there's a potential to turn this into something more. I think it's essentially a vote for the masses. Brexit was a vote enacted 23rd of June 2016 as an outcry against the red tape imposed by the shadow government of the EU, mass unfiltered immigration, and national pride. The main puppets behind the movement for the British independence originated mainly through the eyes of Nigel Farage of UKIP. After official results came through, 78 or so percent of the eligible British voting public came to the ballot box for the referendum. 51% voted to leave, which mainly consisted of Tories and UKIPers, while 48% voted to remain, which mainly consisted of Labour and Liberal Democrat and supporters of regional parties like Plaid Cymru and Scottish National Party SNP. While the media and internet comment sections made it seem like it was a godsend, it didn't seem to be quite the case, with stock prices falling the day after the vote, and a radical devaluation of the pound sterling not seen since 1985, added to the injury, there were reports of racial and religious crimes and uncertainty amongst the electorate, as many people googled the day after, what is the EU and the like? Even with Brexit holding good intentions, Brexit is a sign that we'll be seeing a wave of conservative populism to come, when the main emphasis for its approval was the fear of mass unfiltered immigration. You have the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low-grade bank clerk. And the question that I want to While ask, some might not admit that, it is fair to say that, that the issue alone amidst ask, disturbing rape waves occurring in Cologne, Germany, you. Sweden, and Let attacks advanced by jihadi Muslims like were both the driving the impetuses. Who voted for you? And what mechanism? Oh, I know democracy is not popular with you I lot. Mean, there's nothing quite like seeing two powerful buddies at a high-end bar drinking martinis while watching the world burn as they play a real-life game of the famous board game Risk. Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush were the best of pals. Even David Cameron and Barack Obama are the best of pals. Most of this is just a photo op to appease the globalists, said me and Alex Jones. Anyways, I'm sure some seek to benefit one Another for the good of everyone, but doing it through Bilderberg means G20 and G8 summits, UN conferences and peace talks, 
Yada 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 yada. We've heard it all before, but the main point of discussing the special relationship has to do with how this may break or strengthen depending on who we vote for. It's fair to say that Donald Trump will leave some people arguing, bickering within the political community, but will surely make allies along with the uh, conservative populist leaders in the Netherlands. Like Gerda Wilders in the UK, Nigel Farage, Italy, Matteo Salvini and France, Marine Le Pen. If Hillary Clinton wins, it's fair to say that there might be less tensions. I don't think she'll be threatened too much by Theresa May, but she may feel like an outsider considering how unpopular Angela Merkel from Germany is and centrist politicians are. The peoples of Europe have Mr. to remove President. you. Is this European democracy? Well, I, I sense. Uh, Nigel Farage is essentially the British version of Donald Trump, something very popular amongst the constituency of voters as largely working class white males, not entirely university or college bound. Jeremy Corbyn is the British version of Bernie Sanders, someone on the other hand who represents the left wing spectrum of voters who are largely under 30 and prone to student activism. Both Farage and Trump. Corbyn and Sanders supporters are very vocal and willing to unwilling to compromise from what I am an understanding in an effort to fulfill a utopia that to regular non-committed voters might be viewed as fulfilling on the one hand a right-wing fascist one land if you're a Corbynista, Sandinista or a hippie communist commune if you're a Trumpy or Farage. This rise of populist support is a manifestation of a global recession that affected millions worldwide back in 2008 and the effects of a post-industrial economy and society marred by neoliberalism or political correctness is what they're both crying against these perceived injustices. What makes me scratch my head though is about their respective comparisons is Sanders' so willingness to support Hillary Clinton for president because he thinks that she can win the presidency, despite her track record of being a fake progressive compared to the more progressive socialist-minded Jill Stein. This isn't novel, however. Support Democrats for recent years before because he believes third parties are spoilers. Donald Trump, on the other hand, is a more interesting character, previously belonging as a centrist capitalist with some left-wing opinions prior to 2009. He even ran for the Reform Party in 2000 against Pat Buchanan, but lost to him only to comment about him, about Buchanan, by the way, having Nazi tendencies, which the Nazi accusation is now something that people criticize him for. As of now! Also, he won't support Hillary Clinton's run for office in 2008, peculiarly, and took photos with her and her husband, Bill. He also endorsed Mitt Romney for president over the Constitution Party back in 2012. Needless to say, the American anti establishment candidates aren't so anti establishment as they may seem, which renders both Farage and Corbyn more honest to God, despite their previous and for the latter linkings with the two major parties of Britain. Because he was captured. The Tories and okay. Labour. Or zero hours contracts, or students struggling with debt. I'm not sure that any of that stuff. I'm not sure any of that stuff appears on Nigel Farage's radar. What would you do if you were elected? About Aleppo. About Aleppo. And what is Aleppo? To be honest, I actually endorsed and supported Gary Aleppo Johnson in back Syria. in 2012 in it's protest the, against uh, the same as usual political tactics nowadays against Barack okay, Obama and Mitt Romney. Okay. Even though he didn't win, I honestly, I honestly didn't try and lose because and I realized that I probably should have voted for less with two evils, but that's not my sort of thing. I still appreciate and the work of both parties. Gary Johnson this time, fortunately, day. has not won me and over as I would have imagined in 2016. With his VP candidate, Bill World, saying he'll vouch for Hillary Clinton and his lack of awareness on foreign policy. Mr. Aleppo, observe. I'm talking about living. Go ahead. You got to do this anywhere, any continent. Canada, 
Mexico, Europe over there, uh, Asia, South America, Africa, name a foreign leader that you respect. I guess I'm having an Aleppo moment in the former former president of Mexico. But I'm giving Mexico. you the whole I world. Know, I know, I know. A Green Party president I do remember her running for 2012 office for the Green Party, but she didn't pique my interest that much during that period. It's fair to say that Jill Stein certainly has impressed me more than before, mainly because of what, do not a lot of what she said. Bernie Sanders, so who I believe was the most valued candidate running for major office, spectrum, also agrees with two. They're kind of two peas in the pod. However, some have accused her of being a bit wacky in her anti-vaccination views. That's what we deserve. What we don't deserve is pandering, irresponsible bullshit passes itself off as campaigning. Fucked up in here on that bullshit. Nigga, that's that bullshit. Nigga, that's that bullshit. I'm Joey I've heard about today. this guy, from John Oliver's satirical commentary show. For some reason, I've never heard of him. Why well, should? Today. He's essentially a queer or homosexual zookeeper for lions who talks a great deal about kinky sex and how he's broke his shit. I am gay. I've had two boyfriends most of my life. I currently got legally married. Thank God. It's finally legal in America. I've had some kinky sex. I have tried drugs through the younger years of my life. I am broke as shit. I have a judgment against me from some bitch down there in Florida, but I can tell you I paid a fine with the USDA, and that is nothing but a civil fine. The, the Anyone who is aware of this Evan McMullen guy in the news, he is running as an independent political candidate. He was once a former Republican working to fight against terrorism and cyber crimes. That's she doing George Bush is. While he has good intentions and isn't Donald Trump, I won't support McMullen on the basis that he has a neoconservative point of view, which to many people is not very popular, even among some factions on the right. Um, he also is a member of a certain religion, which I won't name, that believes we should ban people from watching uh, films with an R rating. R rating is like the 15 or the 18 certificate. And drinking Pepsi or Coca Cola, and is okay with allowing young people to marry and have children. Sorry, mate. A bit of a fight with Evan McMullen, the third party candidate. Bring it on. I mean, I think Donald Trump is a very fragile man. I, yeah. I see that because he attacks even people who are vulnerable because he's intimidated by people that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump personify. And I'll tell you, I learned a few things in the CIA, and one of them is how to spot a con man. And I know one when I see one, and he is one. I'll go back in time and kill baby Hitler with my bare hands before he's even born. And last but not least, of course, do I need to say anything Americans. more about Vermin about. Supreme? About. He can't it be taken seriously, nor will he ever win to fight against the hypocrites. With you However, Vermin is where it's at. He's a satirical politician and activist, trolls at events else. and rallies, now, telling people that they need to brush their teeth 24-7, fight against a zombie apocalypse, and get free ponies. He was once a former libertarian and Republican, but has turned this kind of ridiculous monster raving loon party activism in an effort to point out how the Democrats don't we stay true to their policies? The people who thought Donald Trump is ridiculous and bonkers, wait till you hear about Vermin Supreme. You'll be laughing your fucking ass off. Like an episode of 2D TV or Bremer Blood and Fortune Channel 4. Let me say that right now. I'm the guy with the boot on his head, and you're asking me questions like that. Please, sir! Have you no shame? If you pinpoint these attacks, whether in France or in Belgium or in the United States or wherever it is, they have started in earnest since the rise of ISIS. And that is Terror really attacks, unemployment thing among young people, strained social Syria, services for an aging population, migrants and asylum seekers, weight waves administered by a group, easily a scapegoat, Europe is in crisis, the especially the countries with the highest number of foreigners, immigrants and a large exposure in the media and commerce. I love France. It's my first third most visited country. Even about instances like Charlie Hebdo, Paris, Nice, and the Calais jungle, for which a climate of extreme fear and violence and racial and religious tensions grew upon, and given that Calais is very much near Dover, Kent, the nearest port of entry for travelling by a ferry. I have a lot to fear for France. I'm a bit worried that France is not as progressive or as developmental as they seem. 
also this is something that they cannot afford at this time. Among other countries, Belgium has been victim to something similar to France with their terror attacks More than on the Brussels airport. Have already been filed. Italy has not During seen a strong terror attack minister, like France or Belgium, but has seen large number of migrants coming from boats said, from North Africa and the Middle East into Sicily and Lampedusa as a result of the Arab Spring and the violent attacks administered by the Bashar al-Assad regime. Germany has seen rapes occurring through Cologne as a result of really, Chancellor uh, Angela Merkel's government bringing in Syrian asylum seekers really and a violent attack in Munich. While it's definitely obvious to see that Europe. most of the perpetrators of the attacks were not native looking, it is fair to say that some of the social disadvantages and distrust among the people who let them in, officially or unofficially, France, particularly Paris and Marseille, has a similar problem like the US and the UK where gentrification of old neighbourhoods and de facto segregation of ethnic minorities is quite a bit of a problem. Similar ex problems existing within the Western and non Slavic Europe about immigration. Discussing Sweden and Denmark to a great length might not do justice, so I'll just show you this video about an Arab immigrant who resides in Sweden discussing why, when Arabs come over to the predominantly Lutheran country, they think the government is going to give them all these freebies. So shall I news so why do so many Syrians come to Sweden if you google asylum in Arabic Sweden comes up on the top when I come to Sweden I get this house شجرة اليورو حاملة يسعد الله واخيرا حملة مطرتها كثير لتحميل لان اطفال ونقطف اليوروهات وشجرة دولار ما هي حاملة يورو بس يلا نعمي كيف اقمع اللي؟ بسيك شوي استنى 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 خمسي ورا برجع لك يا اسمعني شوي الراتب نزل لقاي برجع لك يا خلاص انت ما تاكل هم نحن بالسويد بنزل راتب منهم بعض اياه منهم سلامي والناس هون بصير معها نهفات كثير انه بكون قاعد واحد بدق لمين لرفيقه بقول له اطلع السويد حلوه والسويد 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 بطلع بنصدم الزلمه حبيت انه اوصل هالشيء بطريقه كوميديه لتوصل لكم يا حرو اخت الملال شو بدنا نساوي لمين ندق لمين ندق تعال ابو محمد طالعوا السويد ها وجيت للسويد لانه معامله الناس فيها انه منيحه كثير، انه بيعطوك بيت كشغل، شعب كثير يعني متساهل جدا مع الناس الجداد وكل شيء. I don't think that Sweden is so very open. I think that other countries are very closed, given the situation in, in, in Syria. It's never about numbers. There can be as many people uh, as there is, as long as we can take care of them and integrate them into society. I think the European sh countries should uh, uh, share their refugees mm. more than they do uh, today. You will pay more taxes to yes. afford them. Yes, I would do that, yes. Okay, so it will affect them. Um, it, it, maybe it will. Um, so. But I, I, don't, I don't care. Um, of course I will pay more taxes if we can help people. Hey, <laughs> طلعت من سوريا لتركيا ومن تركيا لمصر ورجعت من مصر 
لتركيا وطلعت من تركيا لليونان ومن اليونان تميت شي تقريبا سنة حاولت 21 مرة بس بعدين طلعت بس بعد سنة ووصلت للسويد والسبب هو انه ما تميت باليونان لانه ما بتقدم اي مساعدات ولا فيها شغل لانه هي يعني ما خرجت تساعد شعبها لتساعدنا مرحبا كيفكن واخيرا وصلنا للسويد واحلى شيء انه جيت قبل رمضان ب 20 يوم رمضان بدي لما بدي قالوا لي رح تصوم 21 ساعه قلت لهم اه 21 ساعه My opinion, 80% of the Syrians will stay here in Sweden. When I was in Syria, actually, I had just a Nokia, like a cheap phone. But now I have an iPhone. Here we have like money, job, school. So it's not so easy to come back to Syria. The dream is that you return to Syria as it was before. Because I'm the first people who will return to it. Because after Syria, there is no one. Even if I came out and fell, there is no one. Rodrigo Duterte is a controversial but hilarious politician known for implanting vigilante sprawls across the island nation to help end drug violence and prostitution. While it's something that Mr. Gran Torino Dirty Harry Clint Eastwood would applaud, and it's noble to fight against injustice, some might find his anti-crime wave a sign that Donald Trump could win the election too, appealing to the voters' fear of hedonism. Once Mexico is the official blame for the drugs pouring into the country, we could be seeing Duarte level massacres. It's fair to say the historically close relationship between the U.S. and its former colony may have taken a hit, but it's his domestic policies that have many more worried. He cruised to victory back in May, vowing to get tough on crime. is violent. Thereby placing your life in jeopardy, shoot and shoot and dead. Over less than 10 weeks that Duterte has been in power, police have killed more than 1,000 people allegedly in self-defense. Many others registered as deaths under investigation, a term that may include vigilante or extrajudicial killings. You might Donald Trump's favorite word and one of his most established scapegoats, Tiananmen, is on an increasing way. economic force that has seemed to garner large card influence against the U.S. economy for better or worse. The cheaper labor force and goods that disturbingly imitate goods from the U.S., like the Apple iPhone. Free so trade being a very strong issue in the election, China, it's fair to say that certain elements of protectionism the in the name of fighting against neoliberalism will reign plentifully. But don't be so certain. Trump and Clinton can be unpredictable. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar has been losing value in comparison to the Chinese yuan. Coupled with the creeping housing bubble, the government is desperate to control. Experts say there has never been a better time for China to invest in America. Three countries in focus here. Russia and North Korea have... Formally say that they will support Donald Trump's candidacy to strengthen diplomatic ties with the U.S. and create a wave of conservative populism, albeit with some hesitance from the media. Russia has been known lately for acting as an agent for political manipulation and interrogation in areas like the Crimea, Chechnya, and Ukraine. All of them together have used armed forces under the territorial dispute. Also, Russia has been responsible for helping leak information about Hillary. Clinton's campaign, because with the help of WikiLeaks, informally via Julian Assange and holding truth seeker Ed Snowden in asylum over around Moscow. Isn't he Ukraine bright? is still he amidst is. the civil war, or albeit a lesser known one compared to uh, ones going on in Africa. North Korea is a very isolated country and had a very troubled one at that, to the point that when the US government and Sony Pictures decided to release a film about Kim Jong-un's assassination, it gained so much international controversy to the point it was essentially banned from cinemas in America and shown only on video on demand and on DVD Blue. Speaking of Russia finally, where's Henry the Cyborg when you need him?
An early clip by Hughes showcased the turmoil going on in Greece pertaining to the students, a regular folk on the street fighting against police officers against austerity, and how the government is manipulating the citizens' bank accounts. Well, extend that nationwide and throughout Athens and Crete, you've got a bigger problem than one might imagine surrounding the country, which is a manifestation of the government run too much by cronies, tourism boards, and a lack of an industry. Greece was once the hallmark in the epicenter of political philosophy, military strength, and mythology, looking at you, Hercules, is now a country run by too much debt to the European Union. However, it could be better in the coming years, as with Brexit, Syriza, the populist left party, and Greece could find ways to depart from the EU and seek financing elsewhere. So there's no more austerity. For all we know, maybe Donald Trump helped them as he's helping out the white working class men. Because remember, poverty skews radicalism. Not just in the elections, but in the everyday behavior that they give us the credit to try to make Greece different. There's nothing quite like rum, cocktail mixing, Fidel Castro, SC guys while watching the Buena Vista Sosa Club. And lucky last name Isabella Iranata. Come near with you with big brown eyes and long hair. Now all of that can come true with not a yours. Borbiano and Barack Obama decide to lift some of the bands on travel and trade over to the country despite their country's history with dictatorships later to communism. Soviet Russia and the finger conservative head on it to check her out at my corazon. At his age, 90 years old, he seems okay, says this woman of the former leader at the helm of communist ruled Cuba until 2006 when illness forced him to step aside. With his reflections, the way he is, his measured way, his charisma, he's really admirable. I've been a supporter of his back since 2012, and so it's been real fun to see him just come along and um, get to where he's at. Uh, there's nothing that he can do that will change my views or um, my vote. We are enhancing the quality of life for all. Indeed, in this era, our overarching goal is to enhance our leadership. What he said about women 11 years ago makes absolutely no difference to me, and really anybody that I've spoken to does not care. Um, we know that women talk trashier sometimes than the men. We're delighted to be joined tonight by the chairman of the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, Howard Buffett, your former uh, United States Senator here in Missouri, Jack Danforth. And what's happened is going into this debate tonight, Anderson Cooper and Martha Raddatz have received from those social network platforms the views of the platform participants as to what they think the issues are that are important, and hopefully those issues will be presented in the questions that come from the moderators in addition to the questions that are going to come from these ladies and gentlemen who are behind us. The media, we don't like the media. The media is just uh, manipulating people who maybe don't follow politics very well. Excited for this debate. I'm really crossing my fingers. to be here. I want to thank Washington University in St. Louis for hosting this debate and also the uh, Commission on Presidential Debates for sponsoring this. This is obviously a town hall format tonight. It's a chance for the Americans on this stage and thousands of people who have sent in questions online to ask questions directly to the candidate. It was interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah it was an interesting debate. I hope it had their ups and downs. Don't think anyone won yet, but whatever. Yeah. I hope that we will come together in this campaign. Obviously, I'm hoping to earn your vote. I'm hoping to be elected in November. And I can promise you, I will work with every American. I felt like they were asking the, uh, Anderson Cooper and that lady. But there were so many comments. That asking almost their own personal questions. But he's this is a great country. This is a great land. I've gotten to know the people of the country over the last year and a half that I've been doing this as a politician. I cannot believe I'm saying that about myself, but I guess I have been a politician. Well, not to be the place of the stupidest, but I think the better part was when Trump kind of redeemed himself at the end and he didn't rabbit trail off like Hillary. Yeah, that's it. But he never apologizes for anything to anyone. He never apologized to Mr. and Mrs. Khan, the Gold Star family, 
whose son, Captain Khan, died in the line of duty. The part was every time she said she didn't lie. To me, I found that quite funny <laughs> when she said that the emails were... I've gotten to see the commercials that they mm -hmm. did on you. And I've gotten to see some of the most vicious commercials I've ever seen of Mo Michelle Obama talking about you, Hillary. So you talk about, friend, go back and take a look at those commercials. Muslims have to report the problems when they see them. And, you know, there's, a, there's always a reason for everything. If they don't do that, it's a very difficult situation for our country. We did much better on this debate, much, much better. better. And really got to answer, got to bring out all those questions that we didn't hear on the last debate. Totally think you 100% so won this. He won this debate. Yeah. And um, um, yeah, I think I, he'll I, pick yeah. up. I think he'll pick up some points, and it'll wipe out his comments that mm -hmm. he made 11 years ago. Are going to be less yeah. affected after this debate. It stripped us of manufacturing jobs. We lost our jobs. We lost our money, we lost our plants. It is a disaster. And now she wants to sign TPP, even though she says now she's for it. She called it the gold standard. And by the way, at the last debate, she lied because it turned out that she did say the gold standard and she said she didn't say it. They actually said that she lied. Just touched enough on Bill Clinton yeah. to just take and show that he's not against women like Bill Clinton was. Donald talks a lot about, you know, the 30 years I've been in public service. I'm proud of that. I'd be interested in what they have to say, but I really haven't followed them. Or yeah, I, I don't agree with nearly anything else he says or does, but I do respect that. And I think that is something uh, that as a mother and a grandmother is very important to me. Uh, so. I believe that this election has become in part so um, so conflict oriented, so intense, uh, because there's a lot at stake. Them a little bit, and I really have no interest at all whatsoever in especially Gary Johnson. <laughs> he just kind of blew it. He didn't know what Aleppo was. And and yeah, I have no interest in them. I already got my candidate. Say this about Hillary. She doesn't quit. She doesn't give up. I respect that. I tell it like it is. She's a fighter. I disagree with much of what she's fighting for. I do disagree with her judgment in many cases. But she does fight hard and she doesn't quit and she doesn't give up. And I consider that to be a very good trait. You know what you need? Better schools. Better jobs. Less crime. How many of you right now work two jobs just to have enough money to be broke? That ain't right. If you work two jobs and at the end of the week you got just enough money to get your broke ass home, let me hear you say, that ain't right. How many of you have children that they call stupid? Don't be ashamed. It ain't your fault. I asked my niece the other day, what's four plus four? She said 44. It is. But that ain't her fault. That's the school's fault. Now, if your child's school has old ass books and brand new metal detectors, let me hear you say, that ain't right. That ain't right. Pork. Piperina. Beach. Life is good. Well, I think we've learned something today. If you can't be happy eating a moist, roast pork sandwich, bringing the hyperemia with this view in the background in a sea of oily, tight buttocks, you really got a problem. Or you're a Republican. My fellow Americans. Hey guys, can you be quiet? Seth and Amy are talking about our country. They say we're a nation divided. They say we disagree on everything. That's not true. We agree on a lot. Like Paul Rudd. Everybody loves Paul Rudd. <laughs> I didn't know this was gonna happen. You know what else everyone loves? Emojis. No, Farmer!
raccoons. No, beer. Beer. Nothing brings America together like Bud Light. That's why we're forming the Bud Light Party. Just wait till you see our caucus. We got the biggest caucus in the country. Woo-wee! But it's not like too big. Like, you can handle it. That's right at the top of my agenda. We've shipped millions of jobs overseas. And uh, we have a strange situation because we have a process in Washington where after you've served for a while, you cash in, become a foreign lobbyist, make $30,000 a month, then take a leave, work on presidential campaigns, make sure you've got good contacts, and then go back out. Now, if you just want to get out of brass tacks, first thing you ought to do is get all these folks who've got these one-way trade agreements that we've negotiated over the years and say, fellas, we'll take the same deal we gave you. And they'll gridlock right at that point because, for example, we've got international competitors who simply could not unload their cars off the ships if they had to comply. You see, if it was a two-way street, just couldn't do it. We have got to stop sending jobs overseas. To those of you in the audience who are business people, pretty simple. If you're paying $12, $13, $14 an hour for factory workers, and you can move your factory south of the border, pay a dollar an hour for labor, hire a young 25, that's assume you've been in business for a long time, you've got a mature workforce. Pay a dollar an hour for your labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element, making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement, and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. Grilled tenderloin for fundraiser. $1,000 a plate. Campaign ads filled with half-truths. $10 million. Promises to special interest groups. Over $10 billion. Finding out the truth? Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. Without Ralph Nader in the presidential debates, the truth will come in last. Find out how you can help. Go to votenader.com. Vote Ralph Nader for president. What will you give for Al Gore? Do I hear ten million dollars? Forty-five? So, fifty million dollars from Hollywood. Next up, George Bush. Bush and Gore are for sale to the highest bidder. They'll work for special interest groups, but for you, they'll do nothing. The two Beltway parties are bought and paid for. We are not. This election day, help us build a third party that puts Americans first. First off, anyone who tells me that the Purge films all suck and are over the top pieces of left-wing propaganda that will cause copycat crimes, half true, half false. The Purge trilogy all follow a premise where annually one night, late March, all crime is legal for 24, 12 hours. Excuse me, 12 hours. It's a very fucked up premise indeed. In all installments, including the final third one, Election Week, which showcases an anti purge senator running for the presidency requiring a bodyguard protector on purge night only to run around DC trying to end it, Deathly taps into something realistic and primal about the human psyche, while using a plotline derivative of the Warriors or Escape from NY. Its social commentary is best, brutal graphic violence, and a premise that goes from an election where both candidates seem bloodthirsty and will lead to violence and mayhem after the election results. While reprimanded by critics, London Has Fallen has been considered a conspiratorial warning for the populist right. An impending terror attack spreads throughout London, England after a bad negotiation spruced around Pakistan, leaving an Osama bin Laden leader waging jihad. This is the stuff of nightmares for anyone and every politician, including British PM. They're all dead, except for the US President and his trusty bodyguard, played by Scotsman Drad Butler ripping off the premise of the warriors as they find routes to avoid dying. This is a good film in its own way, better than the first installment, Olympus Has Fallen, but some may find it a bit xenophobic. But I liked it nonetheless, and it has a very similar plotline to 24. Perhaps the most political film on the whole list, Snowden deals with the rise and fall of Edward Snowden, 
the NSA whistleblower now under asylum in Russia, uncovering the truth about the US government spying on people's personal information and data is surely likely to make some very paranoid faces and create another Occupy Wall Street like movement of people seeking to get their anonymous activists around. I killed the fight for Sam! This film is directed by Oliver Stone, the king behind conspiracy classics and left wing social justice thrillers like Platoon, JFK, World Trade Center, and Born on the 4th of July. So seeing him make this film, which is something that will appeal to many people from the Bernie Sanders camp, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, is not a surprise. One with a premise about a guy sniping out illegal illegal migrants crossing over the U.S.-Mexico border, it's sure to conjure up images of Donald Trump's "We need to build a wall and have Mexico pay for it" statement. Well, imagine that as an hour thirty long film from the son of director Alfonso Cuarón, Gravity called Desierto. For the most part, the film has going for a very topical premise at the moment, even if the ending takes the pacifist route. Neither the protagonist or the antagonist die a slow, painful death on sight. Much to my surprise, I haven't heard about La Raza wanting to blow up at Trump rallies, though. I'm sure one of them would. While not an overtly political film, Green Wound deals with the premise of four or five millennials being false witnesses to a bloody crime inside a music venue operated by neo Nazi skinheads. Neo-Nazis, I say. To a certain degree, the film, according to director Jamie Saulnier, was supposed to be a critique about the rise of right-wing extremism and white nationalism pervading through America. Green Room touches on some racial elements for stickies and graffiti, saying 88, anti-racism is code word for anti-white, confederate flag and like, but it's not explicitly political, but more or less a violent suspense thriller. Similar films came out this year too, like Imperium, which involves Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe as an FBI operative going undercover as a skinhead to infiltrate against a bomb plot. And then Germany and Netflix USA released a film all of a sudden about Hitler brought back from the grave called Look Who's Back, Ernest Wieder Da, about him convincing the Deutsche Vorken, the German people, the same kind of anti immigrant nationalist rhetoric he exploited upon. It's fair to say that this has always been a favorite in my household. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, Mr. Roman Polanski has his name involved in directing the picture. But it's actually a great suspense film about journalism and political conspiracy. Ian McGregor ghostwrites a memoir on a former prime minister modeled off Tony Blair named Pierce Brosnan, only to be hunted down suspiciously for asking questions too privately into his life. I'm not lying. This is a great film mainly due to the mood acting from both Brosnan and McGregor, and how McGregor's unnamed ghostwriter character is kind of alone, I can sympathize with that. How does this relate to the current election? Well, it involves a subplot about a man willing to assassinate the ex-prime minister and the scandals boggling down the PM, which is very familiar to how some people feel about George Derby and Hillary Clinton. With a plotline similar to the 1970s classics, All the President's Men, and the Oscar Best Picture runner, actually, might I take that back, winner, Spotlight, State of Play is an Americanized remake of the British miniseries about a scruffy journalist uncovering a political conspiracy of bad arms deals, sex scandals, and forced suicides related to a senator. While it does sound televisual, it's a drunken Russell Crowe kooky mannerisms and political turmoil in the post 9-11 universe that makes it very engaging. In many ways it ties very much into Hillary Clinton's bag pertaining to her husband's philandering secret doors of jihadi Muslims and recent scandals related to Anthony Weiner and General Petraeus. The International may perhaps be the most unintended I, I don't know what to say, but it's, you know, many people might consider it anti-Semitic, even though it's not explicit enough, since Three Days of the Condor and The Power Lights View. Two 1970s classics, Clive Owen and Naomi Watts are Interpol agents fighting against a large-scale globalist bank conspiracy to kill off an Italian politician and high-secret without arms trade. 
It's a heavy film which unfortunately wouldn't didn't, didn't win too many people at the box office doing this leading advertising, making it look like it's some sort of new installment of the Bourne franchise. It is not a fucking Bourne movie. It is a great thriller, pulpy, 1970s elements, and it, it exposes a lot of the stuff that's been going on right now with what happened with the Cooperative Bank in the UK and Wells Fargo in the US. As it began involved with dodgy deals to customers and getting tied in with foreign governments. Bill Foster is an ordinary man. Where are you going? Perhaps the angriest film I have mentioned so far, Fallen Down, showcases Michael Douglas taking revenge against the world with his paranoia and being overheated inside a car waiting for traffic. He takes out his grievances against Korean shop owners for expensive cafe beverages, Mexican gangs, a neo Nazi, a fast food restaurant, and the police. It's horrifically terrifying because of its realism and how relatable the main character is to some people. I love this film for its pessimistic worldview and a portrait of a confused LA, Los Angeles, seeing that in this election, homelessness, crime, and unemployment are large issues in the Democratic Forest City, surely a point of interest. Just standing up for my rights as a consumer. I won't go into detail about these propositions to great lengths because it depends on if you live in the state of California or not. But I do uh, have connections over there. I've done interviews, I've worked there, I've done some studies over there, so let's begin. Nonetheless, it is a very important bastion and location in the US because it holds the highest number of electoral votes. I believe 55. So without further ado, I'm going to let you know what my opinions are on the propositions. 51. 51 seeks to secure funding for schools, community colleges within the state. It is important but it does seem to imply that construction funding is the main impetus for the legislation when what we have mainly should be focusing on making sure people get job ready skills for the marketplace. I'm still su fine supporting it. Mainly my main beef with the legislation has to do with should focus on getting career ready skills instead of vanity. 52. 52 seeks to impose fees on privatized hospitals to help fund Medi-Cal, which is essentially a blanket fund for low-income patients, children, and retirees. However, imposing fees to hospitals may not necessarily be the best idea, but to instead make sure people get their care at no further expense. 53. 53 makes sure revenue bonds for public projects totaling over $2 billion get statewide approval. This is essentially voter accountability and taxpayers' awareness and seeks to notify the public and legislators about matters like financing for rail or large-scale infrastructure. 54. 54 seeks to make sure that legislation is mentioned on the internet no more well, actually, more than 24 hours before pass, make sure that voter accountability and taxpayers' expense aren't abused. Good intentions, I support the legislation because of its bipartisanship. 55 seeks to raise taxes on people making over 250,000 United States dollars. It's an effort to help fund for hospitals and protect the environment and the working class. 55 may seem to have good intentions, with income inequality being a definite issue. I don't think raising taxes will always solve the whole problem, because one way or another, wealthy people will find ways to escape and wiggle around the system through the benefit of a crony government, something that the Corbynistas and the Bernie Bros bitching complain about. 56. 56 seeks to impose a higher sales tax on tobacco products. Most small businesses and change are are against the policy, but family and health advocates are for it. Personally, if you're going to keep someone and keep telling them smoking is bad, 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 they'll find ways to do it. It's, you know, the nanny state principle. It can backfire. I made a personal choice not to collapse my lungs. But we'll see how it works. 57. 57 seeks to offer parole to nonviolent felons. I am supportive for lowering the prison population as much I 
can see that some people are a bit crazy around these parts. So, you know, let's be cautious. But we need to make sure America is not known for having such a bloody high incarceration rate. 58. 58 issues a mandate for schools to provide strong English language instruction for foreign students. It's not too complicated given California's large multicultural population and the Hispanic population. And it's fair to say that 58's intentions are good, but forcing someone to speak a language doesn't always work well, especially if that person is older than 6 or 7 per se. I should know. I learned French at age 16 and beyond. I'm still currently learning the grammatical structure and syntax. Oui, c'est vrai. Corporations and labor unions, Prop 59, 59, corporations and labor unions aren't entirely free entities. They're agents for representation. This is what 59 implicates. Well, I think cronyism has become a big issue in the political campaign of both Trump and Clinton. I don't think the legislation will do much. It will affirm officially by paper that California is having enough of it. Prop 60. 60. What? So about porn stars and condoms. We'll skip this one because it's too graphic. 61. 61 seeks to make sure corporations aren't responsible for hiking up prescription medication prices. Much of this has been responsible because of the price hikes mentioned in the news from the companies behind EpiPen and Martin Schutelli or I'll call them yoga because it's funny. I am more of a fan of alternative and natural medicine remedies, but I do think companies raising prices at the expense of people's health and education to me seems like a bad idea. 62. 62 will make sure that capital punishment is abolished in favour of life imprisonment without parole. This is a double-edged sword in many ways because many countries, including the our EU, with their human rights charter, believe that capital punishment is inhumane, cruel, and unusual. But lately, most methods to kill off the sickest and most demented people um, in the Western countries have been done via nitrous oxide and lethal injection instead of the electric chair, like 15 to 20 years ago. Sixty-four. Oh dear, 64 is a ball that seeks to win over the millennials every fucking where. Legalizing cannabis part, we Mary Jane, man, what do you call it statewide? I don't obsess a curve for too much for the herb. I do think that legalizing it will certainly lessen the number of people in prisons. But you will be seeing more of these Tommy Chong's and Seth Rogan's up in smoke with some Pineapple Express cars right and everyone accused being the fascist, man. 65. 65 pretty much entails something about carry-out bags, which sounds like the dumbest policy I've ever heard. I would rather focus fees imposed for programs to extend ending poverty and homelessness, not for some anti-global warming shite. 66. 66 intends to allow the courts to initiate and filter procedures and decisions when it comes to prisoners and the death penalty. This piece of legislation seems fairly complex, and I will admit I am not entirely certain of what it's all about, but it's to help mend some of the things related to the death penalty. 67. Six, Prop 67 seeks to pretty much ban plastic bags. It's as ridiculous as the Prop 65 measure I have to say to myself, why, why, why? Seems like Greenpeace has something to do with all this nonsense. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. At the end of the day, we are all seeking for a quick solution to our problems. Poor rich. It is evident in all humanity. We all have our own vices and violent demands. And often than not, they cannot be filled because of forces beyond our control or because we don't want to make ourselves look foolish. It's time that the US public take a stand against everything and wish whoever they want 
as long as they stay away oh, from me and don't even feel on my turf. Voluntarism is the best source <laughs> of life there is. It's time that we build zones and areas to cater to every political faction around so no one feels like they have to blame one another and they keep fighting uphill battles and blame the establishment, the media, the Jews. Blame, blame, blame. I heard it all fucking all. You've heard it all. So have I. For me, I'll just sit around and watch the whole unravel. So enjoy, prunes, and see Donald Trump in this election. And I am a sausage. Frank, on values. America. 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 send some politicians up there on time. <laughs> but oh, oh, obviously because it, it's about one page if even it's that long. But, <laughs> but I'm willing to I'm willing to challenge any of these gentlemen up here to a 25 mile bike ride any time of the day in the heat of Texas. And and you know you know, that subject has come up, and uh, sometimes in fun, but sometimes not in fun. But, you know, there are laws against AIDS discrimination, so if you push this too much, you better be careful. Hello, this is Heron Bay speaking. It's time to fuck sheet up. I am the best candidate over bitch Trump and crooked Hillary. Vote for Heron Bay for your 2016 President of the United States. All justice will be given to your supreme overlord Heron Bay. Hashtag, dicks out for Heron Bay.